although they hold a lot of mortar I find that they're not always the most um, intuitive for mortar control especially on a cavity so if you're building uh, obviously a house with a cavity in, in between and especially if you're not using full fill insulation it's blown in you know you're going over trays you've got radon trays around the around the bottom of your house obviously like this is getting popular at a lot of sites now uh, you know you're gonna end up filling those trays up a lot if you're not controlling that mortar spread so that's another big thing for me also when it comes to uh, using using a uh, long spread to standard pick and dip i'd recommend starting off using long spread to get the hang of pick and dip more than just using pick and dip straight away you know one trial at a time if you've been uh basically doing a long spread normal traditional method for basically most of your brick lane career you want to start off as similar as possible so maybe even just transition from doing your traditional uh without grooves so just laying out a spread of mortar and then not grooving the spread just sort of laying out the spread of mortar and then just putting your joint on the brick traditional and then slowly transitioning from that to a long spread pick and dip version so where you're putting out a long spread and then dragging your brick back to you know create your perp joint and then then finally transitioning from uh you know the long spread to a standard pick and dip but this, this can also be depending if you haven't got a 10 inch trowel so if you've got an 11 inch and you really haven't got the money at the moment or you know the mortgage is coming out and you haven't got a lot of money spare after you've paid all your bills and everything and you you can't get all of the 10 inch trowel straight away just carry on using your 11 do a do a long spread with the 11 and then maybe even transition to doing one trowel full uh, spread and then pick and you know then picking and dip so you can normally get two bricks uh, with a trowel full of mortar and an 11 inch you can normally get two bricks worth on a pick and dip so you can transition to two two spread pick and dip and then finally if you can get hold of a 10 inch trowel for cheap on ebay or something like that then transition down to the one you know one trowel mortar per brick pick and dip and it just gets more intuitive over time expect a little bit of wrist ache on your first start doing the pick and dip because obviously the movements are very different and it's something new that your body's got to get used to especially if you're if you're already fast laying traditional uh and you're laying you know say for instance say a fast you know a decently fast brick layer lays 500 bricks uh a day and i don't care what anyone says on youtube there's people saying oh, i lay a thousand bricks 1500 bricks 2000 bricks um you know there's a very few select people who can do that uh lay 1500 bricks in a day or a thousand bricks in a day and there's a very select few pieces of work where you're able to do that um but at the end of the day uh i'm talking about someone who works from eight till three eight o'clock in the morning till three thirty four o'clock at, at uh, in the uh in the afternoon with a, a break or two thrown in uh, and I don't, I don't think 500 bricks is bad for any brick layer to do. So if you're laying 500 bricks in a day, that's a full pack of bricks. You shouldn't, you, you should not consider yourself uh, slow by any means. So if if you're laying 500 bricks in a day, you want to just take it steady because obviously if you're going to be doing pick and dip and you've already been doing five, six, seven hundred bricks a day traditional, and you go straight to pick and dip, you know your body will take a little bit of time to get used to that extra. Uh, that, those extra movement patterns because it's a different movement your body's never got used to but especially once you've been doing it a while you'll obviously be up in those numbers because the, you're going to end up laying those bricks faster even myself today um, from transitioning from traditional to pick and dip I wasn't actually going that much faster when I first started I was probably laying at the same speed as traditional when I first started doing pick and dip and now I'm consistently laying more bricks per day uh, p using pick and dip than I ever would do consistently laying traditional so there's been an odd couple of days where I've actually laid more traditional uh, well there's been an odd day uh, a couple of years ago where I, I laid more traditional but I worked a lot more hours to lay those bricks whereas now I start after eight o'clock at around quarter past eight and I finish up around four uh, around between three and four o'clock, depending on when I get started, you know, depending on the site conditions and what's happening from day to day. And I'm consistently laying more bricks. 
and I'm weighing a higher average percentage of bricks per day than I ever did using traditional with a lot less effort, a lot less effort. So anyway, guys, I hope that has helped you guys out a lot. I know this video has been a little bit longer than I intended, but I hope I covered on a lot of topics when it comes to pick and dip. I'm going to make this is going to be part one um, sort of pick and dip tips, obviously, in, in with this boundary wall uh, build. But uh, I'm going to try think about some more tips that have occurred to me and I have got more tips I just don't want to list them all in this video because I'll just dilute them all down so I want to try and make more uh, you know direct points in these pick and dip videos so I hope this video helped any of you guys uh, watching here and if you're on the fence about trying pick and dip like I was I was on the fence for a good six months about converting to pick and dip uh, and I wasn't convinced that you know it was all cracked up to what it was i was convinced that you weren't filling your joints correctly you were spewing too much mortar out the back of the wall and i'm going to be quite honest before i finish this video you know if you if you do the things that i said in this video basically if you when you do first start if you are putting too much mortar on if you are putting too big of a spread you know um if you're not as controlling with your spread you are gonna spill more and more into the cavity you are going to uh, not fill your joint as well but as anyone will know when they first started playing traditional everyone dropped trials fall down the cavity everyone didn't fill the perp joints full enough everyone you know pushed too much mortar out of your your bed joint and spilled it in the cavity there's you'll come across the same problems you did when you first learned traditional learning pick and dip but all you've got to do is just be more aware when you're doing it especially like coming to like if you obviously a lot of guys who are watching this might might be in gangs so he'll be on houses and maybe even when you're doing your spread pick and dip just scraping the back of your of your spread after you've just laid your one spread coming back to the to the wall and picking your brick up um you know obviously coming to back to lay your brick just scrape your trowel to the back of the mortar spread to flatten that out and then you'll just increase you, you know you'll increase the likelihood of you pushing that mortar to the front of the brick and not into your cavity every time you're picking and dipping so and another thing before i finish uh, with the outro of this video i just want to talk uh, a quick moment about uh mortar board heights and brick stack heights for pick and dip specifically so as you can see on this video here i'm having to bend down for my bricks which isn't ideal i was working on my own on this day and i'd used up all my bricks and it was coming towards the end of the day and i was just trying to use the mortar as quick as i could but ideally when you're setting up for pick and dip you want to try set your bricks in stacks of six instead of stacks of 12s with brick clamps so you want to stack, uh, stack your bricks six 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 so three stacks of six on top of each other then, then on the fourth stack uh, take the brick clamp off flip them three the opposite way on three the opposite way on to give the stack some stability and then you want to obviously six 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 straight away and try and get the stacks as close to chest height as you can uh, especially on depending on what ground you're on whether it's stable or not and if the stacks looking a little bit wobbly you know take a few off and then you want to obviously stack your mortar boards, ideally on some mortar board stands. I don't actually have any right now, but I've been using some ground workers manhole rings. So I've been stacking them up to around uh, above knee height, ideally. Uh, ideally waist height would be better. But uh, if you can get your bricks uh, in more frequent stacks closer to you, especially with pick and dip, because you're going to be moving less uh, between the boards with longer spreads. You're just going to be using small spreads. You want to try and get more boards and more stacks close together so you're not having to reach and then obviously this will all account for your pick and dip speed increasing as well so it's all things to think about when doing the pick and dip and also the brick has a big difference uh, to do with the um you know the way you do the pick and dip obviously with perforated bricks you're going to use more mortar than when you would with a frog brick obviously i've touched on that before and your consistency you can more or less get your, your mortar the consistency that you would as a traditional, but obviously you're going to want to use a long spread variant first if your mortar is wetter. And as it stiffens up through the day, especially in the summertime, you can then convert to more of a uh, one trowel per brick pick and nip style. And obviously I recommend, especially when laying uh, above chest height uh, or at chest height to be doing a single brick pick and dip. So. 
these are all things to just to think about. So I hope this video um, uh, just shed some more light on the pick and dip because it does look like a bit of a party trick when you look at it on YouTube. It does look like a bit of a fad, but it is um, it's basically the real deal. It is that good. So these are just all a few extra tips for anyone who's on the fence about trying pick and dip. So anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, as from make the time recording this video, I've gone from like 25 subs to like 50 subs in a couple of days. So thanks so much, guys, for uh, the support. And if you enjoy this video, give it a like and subscribe for more Britain content. Uh, I do this five days a week. I've been doing it for 10 years, so I ain't stopping anytime soon. So there's going to be more videos coming out every day. So I've got a, uh, a backlog of videos all uh, recorded. Uh, and I'm going to be voicing over, uh, voicing over videos, you know, on any days that I get time to after work. So uh, thanks so much for the comments and the support. And I'm glad everyone's enjoying it. So... I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.